activist who was born and brought up in Rangoon, Myanmar. Good to have you on with us. What does this mean for refugees who are living in this camp? How bad are the conditions there for them? Hi, thanks for having me today here. Yeah, but as you know, the situation, uh, it is not new. They have been living there since 2017, and, and some of them are already living several decades now. So the people mainly is suffering. They are, today, the, the fire broke out. It, caused, it takes uh, two, three hours, and then the 2,000 shelters have been destroyed, and 12,000 people have been affected. So all, all the people are right now, they don't even have any proper appropriate humanitarian support. They don't even have a drinking enough to drink drinking water or any any kind of shelter. So the humanitarian aid is desperately needed for these people. So as as you say, the people have been living in this camp since 2017. I know this was meant to be just a temporary condition, but here we are six years mm -hmm. on. Are the conditions at the camp with the overcrowding that we're seeing in themselves lending itself to the risk of fires like this? I mean, right now, uh, when I talk, when I spoke few people, uh, uh, they some of them are still uh, not sure how the fire broke out. But as you see, as you tell earlier, the people have been living there a long time, and they are very desperate, and they have a lot of social issues. And on top of that, now something very shocking me as well is uh, there are some children are missing now. So this is a little bit concern, very concerning about about the about the uh, what what happening on the in the, the in the camp. So we parents also, you know, they're, they're desperate. They they are looking for their children. Um, also now, now uh, because you know the people are living there is so many years now, they are lack of education, lack of uh, humanitarian support, proper support. But thanks to Bangladesh government, they still look after them and they need more help. Yeah, you, you keep talking talking about the lack of support that's available. I mean, what what is the the future looking like for people in these camps when there there doesn't seem to be any kind of aid or any kind of humanitarian support available for them? I mean, they are they are receiving certain uh, limited level of uh, humanitarian support, but now these twelve thousand people who lost their shelter uh, urgently need their need help. International community need to immediately arrange something to support these people with children and with women and elders so they need they need their help right now and also the future is a very dim for these people because you look at the Burma, they, their solution is they they need to go back to burma with dignity with their rights and 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 you look at the uh, milit situation in burma and the military is now on killing spree they are killing them burning down the same the, the, they committed the, the same tactic they used to uh, to commit the genocide against the Rohingya people. They are now using the same tactic every part of the country. Look at the Zagain state, look at the Shan state, look at Karin state, look at Mon state, look at Tanindai, look, look everywhere, Maguid state you know, division. They are every state, the military is creating chaos, the whole country, and there are more than 3,000 people has been killed so far. Mm -hmm. So the situation is really tense in Burma. And they, their hope is they, they are, they are, you know, all they're looking for, they hope that they want this to, to go back to Burma, to their home, to their own land. But that's not happening so, very soon. All right, we'll leave it there. Chao Wen joining us from Geneva. Thank you.